few weeks ago, we did a video presentation on the three-tiered calc delivery system on our 1680 that's up and operating right now. And I wanted to give you an overview of that as we get here right before Christmas. And it's 78 in South Florida. And it's a lot colder maybe where you are as well. So come on in. So we had some questions related to the unit and how it worked. I had some comments related to was it necessary or maybe it's kind of an overuse of an old technology. But really, you know, going back into the historical record, I can remember seeing Kalksteros operating on aquariums in the early 90s, even mid 90s in Germany. And really a calc delivery system is the most economical way to get calc calcium and alkalinity in check and help to also elevate pH in a coral reef aquarium system. It's always been a challenge. There's some really good comments uh, related to it from some really intelligent people that I respect highly in the trade. I can name them off real quickly. Chris Meckley, obviously at ACI Aquaculture. Uh, you got Dr. Craig Bingman, who gave a great talk at MACNA in October in Milwaukee. I mean, he went on for 45 minutes all about calc washer and how beneficial it is is and how easy it is to do it. Going and trying to create an automated system on an existing reef aquarium that delivers calc or a high pH calc solution comparatively to a calc stirrer that's constantly stirring or slurry going in, there's a lot of thoughts about that. So when I came up with the three stack system, which was the three cylinders, we installed that here in the filter room and here it is finally working. You've got your main vessel here that's about six gallons. Uh, this vessel here is up almost six gallons as well. You'll notice they're both totally full, totally full. There's a purge valve right here and if I open it, it'll burp water out. Right there, just burp the water out. Your pH probe is right here. This one also, you can purge the air out really easily. And the only air gap we have is right here, your RO water going in. So let's talk about what happened. It's stirring right now. And I wanna show you a couple of items that took place with the unit. Originally, I designed it, you know, being a reasonably smart guy with this spinner, which is basically a magnetic stirrer. And we put even a PVC piece here about three quarters of an inch and the little bullet here, the magnetic bullet spun. And then when we hooked it up with the water in there, it wouldn't spin. We couldn't figure out why. So we lessened the, the distance to about a quarter inch, it still wouldn't spin. So we pulled that off and then we got really smart and figured, oh, we'll use an MP40. Well, here's a brand new MP40. When this motor is connected connected to the side of the tank like this, it works perfectly fine. But when you turn this motor upside down and you try to put this on top, it doesn't work. It has a built-in shutoff in case it falls off the side of the tank so it doesn't keep running. It's built in, I didn't know, we didn't know how to delete that. So we got rid of the idea of putting the MP40 on it. And you know, this is the reality of trials and tribulations of the fish guy. So I got thinking about it. We put two bulkheads on the bottom of it. We put a just a simple 20 R a walkie right here. So this intake right here is up elevated about four inches right there. And the return goes in on a 45 through the bottom through these bulkheads and spins the water around inside there in a vortex. So it's filled with calc going now. It starts at 8 a.m., shuts off at noon. And then that gives it its time to settle. All the calc settled. We had about an inch of calc on the bottom. I put two cups inside of it and this was clear. So it's spinning now. Uh, the pH on the system right now is only about 9.8. We're looking to get it up to about an 11, but it's only been running for a day. I didn't put a pH probe in here, but the water literally has to go from here into there and settles into here. And then this water goes into here and comes out of there when it's administering the calc via the DOS system on this intake, which is right here inside the vessel and the dose systems is up here and the dose systems take it and bring it into the overflow box there that then goes into the sump through the system and then back into the aquarium. That's set at an 8.29, so administers when the pH goes below 8.29 but only in the evening hours for now. 
So we have the original document back up on here with a little note for Josh. He's got it programmed now into the Apex to go off at 8.29 for pH. And when the calc would go to 8.7, it'll also go off. So that helps give that balanced approach to administering clear liquid calc washer into the system automatically starting at 8 p.m. to 7 a.m. for the next couple of weeks, see how it works, and see where we settle in with a stable pH in the system. We're running anywhere, we had been running anywhere from 8.1 to about maybe an 8.3, but in the morning I've seen it as low as 8.0 or 8.02. So now it's gonna change the profile just that little bit, and we're gonna see the growth patterns, we're gonna see the changes in the main reef aquarium, because the main reef aquarium is really growing super well. It's lots of aquaculture. There's some LPS here, some torches and euphilias, but you look at it, there's a lot of Acropora, Seriatopora, Montipora, some Gonopora, some more large LPS corals, some chalices, there's some really nice corals. So it's a beautiful reef aquarium and we're getting ready for the holiday coming up. Christmas is Sunday and Monday I'm headed to the Bahamas. So we've got a wrap up on the calc store operating and next week we've got a really awesome video that's going to launch on Friday right before New Year's that shows the beautiful 6,000 coral reef aquarium that we have in Atlanta and that's going to be profiled in, in Coral Magazine coming up in the January February issue. So stay tuned for that one. Like, subscribe and send us your comments. We'd love to answer those questions. See you next year.